well. He taught me about nutrition. Um, and I just really, really liked it. I loved, I fell in love with the gym nutrition. And like, since then I've just like evolved my knowledge in training nutrition, a lot of like functional health. So I got a little bit, how I got into athletic training. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. And, uh, it's my passion. So, so it kind of started with dad and then you kind of branched out and added your own, your own, uh, uh spin to it. Now, as far as nutrition, we had uh, Mr. Skip Robinson on the podcast last week. I think he's like the oldest person to ever get his IFBB pro card. That's and awesome. he had like, you know, like his own perspective on things. So from like a younger perspective, what is your take on nutrition and supplements? I kind of put them in separate categories, but what is your take on nutrition and supplements as far as its place in helping people to build their body and reach fitness goals. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are not educated properly in nutrition and just their health in general. Um, so that's, that's its own thing on its own. Um, I really like to focus on like the whole picture. Like if someone is not healthy, let's figure out, you know, if you have a, a GI issue, a gut health issue or a hormonal issue, let's figure out, you know, what caused it. Right getting out of the root problem and focusing on let's fix certain lifestyle factors to get you overall healthy and actually prevent this from happening. Um, I think nutrition is something that every single person should be educated in. I think it's, it's like a basic human need, like nutrition, having a basic knowledge is really important and a lot of people don't have that. Um, so I think that's something that everyone should have. Um, and I think supplementation can be very helpful. Um, and there's, there's definitely a time and place to have supplements. Like I think most people should be taking, you know, fish oil, uh, multivitamin, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I think supplements can be really beneficial to help aid the process. Like for example, if someone has, like I have a client with, um, with SIBO, like a, a really bad overgrowth and bacteria, um, there's certain supplements that can really help speed up the process. But the main thing is let's focus on your nutrition. Let's focus on lowering your stress levels, like the basics. Um, so I think nutrition is super important for everyone, especially like younger kids as they're growing up, they need to learn this now. Um, and then supplements definitely have, definitely has their purpose for sure, but it's not something that you should rely on solely. That's something you, you add in into addition, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Now, what would you say if you had, of course, like there's always like a list into five or 10, but, or 20, if you were to narrow down to like five big barriers uh, to like that people, most most people or most of your clients have uh, five barriers that, you know, are right in front of them, keep them from kind of reaching their basic fitness goals. Ooh. What would those five barriers be? Oh, I like this question. Um, the first two I think of our mindset is a huge one. I focus a lot on mindset and, uh, expectations. Um, people don't realize that they're, if they don't have a positive mindset or the right mindset or the belief in themselves, they're not going to succeed They're They're not because I, I tell my clients, it's like, it's, are you checking the boxes or are you doing a hundred percent? Like, okay, you're going to the gym, you're following your nutrition, but like, how are you going about it? Are you like, Oh, I have to eat this and I have to go to the gym. And like, this sucks. Versus like, I want to eat this to feel my body. I want to do this because I want to feel good about myself. And I want to feel proud of myself. You know, I'm going to the gym because I like going to the gym. That second person is going to be so much more successful than that. The person just checking the boxes, you know, right. and I can go on mindset. I talk about this for like days. So that, that in itself is huge. That can be positive mindset. That can be believing in yourself. That's, you know, that's a huge thing. Um, and then expectations for sure. People, I think, especially nowadays with all the technology that we have and the information that we have, it's expected nowadays that you're going to see these crazy results very fast. Right. And so I'll get, you know, a handful of clients who they've been, you know, I, I have more like moderate advanced clients, but I do have like some more beginners and, and they expect, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds in three months. And I'm like, that's not realistic. <laughs> that's not healthy. And you got to think about your, your internal health. And you've got to think about, are you ready for a fat loss phase? And, you know, one to think about too, is like, we want to, we want to keep the weight off. Right. Yeah. So I'd say mindset and expectations of like timeline for sure. Um, 
And then realizing that I think my third one would be people think a lot of people think that change is like you make one decision and you're, you, then you're doing it right. Like you hire a coach, right? I'm set. And in reality, it's you hire a coach or a personal trainer or anyone, even a soccer coach, right? You hire them to help give you the plan, to give them the drills, but it's up to you to put the work in, you know? So that's one too, is like, you have to be the one that's got to put the work in. Um, I think people expect that it's going to be difficult. Like you're going to have failures. You're going to mess up. You're going to not have days when you feel like doing it. And that's something people have to realize as well. It's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable at times, but that's how you grow, you know? Um, and then two more, I don't know. I think a lot of those could be like, there could be a lot of subcategories to those. Um, but a lot of it's just mindset. I feel like, and just expectations, like it's, it's all mental, you know, it's like, it's not just, I, it's like, I can give you the plan, but it's like, it's the mindset you've got to work on the most. And I do a lot of working with mindset. Um, just because I found it so powerful. I've realized how much my mindset has affected my life negatively or positively. Um, so I focus a lot on that. And I think it's really important, especially as like a, a youth, you know, like that should be something you should be working on now, you know? Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, you know, I've been, you know, for better or for worse, I've been getting like feedback from some of the viewers. And I guess kind of like the general theme was, I was too student athlete heavy uh, for the month of February as far as the guest I had on. And uh, some of the viewers was like, okay, well, we're not D1 or D2 athletes. Can you come up with uh, like more fitness topics for, you know, for most of us? So with that being said, I came up with an idea for today's episode. So the, I'm going to break down the demographic. So between 18 and 25, right at the tail, at tail end of high school and right through like college for beginning, uh, beginning individuals that want to really build up their body, not necessarily at mm. like a pro level, but really build up their body. I'm going to start the stop, uh, little stopwatch and okay. I'm going to put you, uh, put you on the, on the hot burner here. In 30 seconds on the stopwatch, I'm going to name the, the most common muscle groups that I get questions for and okay. just give me like one workout routine that would be like a go-to workout routine for that muscle group. Okay. All right. All righty. So we are going to... I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Triceps. Uh, extensions, rope extensions, uh, push downs, uh, narrow grip push ups, diamond push ups, okay. kickbacks, oh, skull crushers, all those. Okay. Uh, upper back. Uh, so you could do like for rear delt, you could do rear delt flat, rear delt flies, uh, bent over rear delt raises. Um, you can do, uh, like lat pull downs, you can do, um, certain types of rows for your lats, um, like you could do single leg, single arm, okay. dumbbell row. And dumbbell the so most time. overrated muscle group right now that you see your the abs. gym goats. Your abs, your abs. Well, that too. Abs are made in the kitchen. Abs made in the kitchen, okay. Yeah. That's, you're the second person that said that recently on the show. Uh, glutes, a lot of attention on glutes. Uh, like- you could do kickbacks, you could do directly kickback, you could do it to the side, you could do like a lot of just, Dumb, uh, deadlifts, squats, glute bridges, uh, uh, Bulgarian split squats, Ooh. lunges, step down lunges. And yeah. what about the skinny legs, chicken legs, turkey legs, the calves? Uh, calf raises. Calf raises. That's yeah. simple. Okay, calf yeah. raises and biceps. Uh, hammer a curls, feature curls. Okay. Um, if you, do, you're going to work that with like a lot of uh, back exercises too. And stop. Cool. You are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> you yeah. Are a wealth of, <laughs> you are a, like workout encyclopedia. That was like uh, right on point. Now, as far as like, uh, as far as like, uh, like gym pet peeves, 
what are like three things that you see in the gym that are kind of like turnoffs or or kind of annoy? We got like a bunch of those in the DMs. It had more to do with electronics. What are like three of your biggest pet peeves when you go in the gym? Okay. Um, I mean, incorrect form, but like really obviously incorrect form uh, or like doing it way too quickly and not enough range of motion, like just rubbing up the reps, you know, making sure there's intention behind what you're doing. Doesn't like the number of reps isn't always, it's more important to do quality reps. Um, I hear people grunting, doing like basic things like bicep curls. I'm like, there's no need to do that. <laughs> Not necessary. <laughs> I heard that one time someone was like walking on the treadmill. I was like, why are you grunting right now? <laughs> there's no need. <laughs> um, being on your phone. I mean, I'm guilty sometimes between sets, but if you're like, I had someone the other day, I need to use the pendulum squat and they were just leading on and having a conversation for like five minutes. I'm like, oh, I need that. Um, what else? Um, my roommate's laughing in the background. <laughs> um, now I can't think of anything. Uh, oh yeah. She said using the assisted pull-ups as like a leg press kind of thing. <laughs> um, trying to make it too fancy. The basics yeah. work very, very well for a reason. You don't have to complicate it. Yeah. Just start with the basics. That's, that's a really good one. You don't got to go crazy using the resistance bands they're beneficial for certain reasons like for example if you have trouble activating your glutes you can use those to activate them get them firing and then go do an exercise that's going to use them you're going to have like that's beneficial but if you're trying to just build muscle using booty bands and body weight stuff you're not going to see much results um yeah yeah and like yeah just keep it simple you know like there's there's you there's like professionals and you see like elite athletes and they're adding in like extra stuff and there's a purpose behind it but that comes after using you know, the basics like we're talking about nutrition like that comes first and then supplementation you know that's that's an addition okay. uh you know the basics use the basics okay. so i think that's yeah. now sarah a year almost close to a year from this date I did a uh, courageous conversation. It was like a, uh, like a youth fitness event. And it went terribly wrong because, <laughs> um, so the guest that I brought on, I guess she didn't really have any experience with like, like tailoring like her message to like high school audiences. And she was like a dietitian. And the, the basically the gist of that virtual event was, fitness and nutrition on a budget okay. and a lot of the stuff that that she kind of put in the average inner city kid in Detroit I was still staying in Detroit at the time the average inner city kid in Detroit could either not relate to or could not keep up with the budget that she put up with so okay um with that being said want to kind of scan your brain for a meal plan on a budget as far as breakfast snack lunch and dinner so breakfast okay snack lunch and dinner a meal plan on a budget okay um so i guess it could be really independent per person uh based on like what foods they like you know their health and stuff um but i think people overcomplicate like how expensive it is to eat healthy because if you just buy like the basics then you're solid you know um and there's a lot of times you can buy things in bulk so I'll do that and I'll like put a lot of the food in the freezer. So like things like buying chicken or um, like a lot of proteins, you can just buy in bulk and then put a bunch in the freezer. So you don't, you, it's cheaper in the long run. Um, like rice, you can get a huge bag of it. And that lasts like forever. Same thing with like potatoes. Um, so those are really easy ways to get like carbs and, and proteins in. Um, and it's not expensive. Um, beans are a great source of fiber, carbs, and there's a good amount of protein in them. So you can get those. It's pretty cheap. Um, like a really like limited budget, I would say, I mean, I like to do like egg whites, eggs, and maybe some peanut butter and like oatmeal or cream of rice. Um, you can get a lot of those in like bulk. Um, if you, yeah, so you could do that. Um, Rice and you can buy chicken like, and egg white so far. 
Yeah. Uh, chicken, like potatoes or rice. You can buy those in bulk, like a, super easy and it lasts forever. Um, like rice would be the easiest, I would say, for carbs. Um, easily digestible. Um, and then you could do like chicken. It's pretty expensive. Um, I mean, you could be fine with all that. You can, and then just get like maybe some olive oil or coconut oil that lasts forever um, for some fats, um, anti-inflammatory. Um, and then, I mean, if you want to get really fancy, you could say, oh, adding in like maybe some spinach and then maybe some like ground beef, you know, that'd be really good. Um, I'm trying to think of like a very limited budget, like easily you could just do protein from egg whites, eggs, and chicken. And then your carbs could be either like cream of rice or oatmeal and then rice or potatoes. Um, and then your fats would be from the egg yolks. You could do some peanut butter or almond butter, and then you'll have some fats from the chicken. If you wanted to do like maybe chicken thighs or ground beef, or just get a bunch of coconut oil or olive oil, like that's easily you're good. And then maybe get like, if you can get some fruits, um, again, buy that in bulk and you'll be able to get, like, you'll get some fiber in, you'll get some micronutrients in, um, yeah. So I guess it depends on the budget and like the person, but like easily, those are some really easy ways to get, you know, all of your nutrients in. Okay. Um, now breaking the, yeah. the bank, so to speak. Now for supplements, what's your take, uh, you know, especially someone, you know, being in, in the profession, what is your take on whey protein that gets a lot of hype? You go to Walmart, you find a bunch of different brands. You go to GNC, you find a bunch of different brands. So that's pretty much like, I would say the most DMs on supplements revolve around whey protein and mm, creatine. Okay. And I usually don't have a set answer. So I'm kind of like, okay. you know. Yeah, so creatine is super helpful. I mean, your body naturally has it in your body. And then also if you're eating like meats, you're going to get some. Uh, I use, I use creatine, just, just creatine monohydrate. There's other ones. Don't bother with those. Just get regular creatine monohydrate, like five grams. I do is like in, in my intro workout. Um, it's going to just help saturate the muscle. Um, and you're gonna have a little bit more power to your workouts. Um, so that's awesome. It's a great supplement. There's not really any downsides to it. And, um, and then for protein powder, I think it's super beneficial. I think it's a really easy way to get protein in people that like struggle, especially if you're trying to eat more food and you're like, I'm full, really easy way to get that in. You can add to oatmeal, cream of rice, having a shake, whatever. Um, you want to get isolate, not a concentrate. It's going to be just higher quality. Um, you're going to get like higher quality protein. Um, you want to like avoid like a ton of extra artificials, artificial sweeteners, um, if you're going to have a scoop of protein, get at least one with like at least 20 grams of protein in it. That's like a general, it's a pretty good amount of protein, depending on the person, maybe even more. Um, you don't need to have all the extra carbs and the fats in it. So like for mine, I get like a, car, a protein isolate powder. Um, I use Morphogen Nutrition a lot. Um, you also can go to like Walmart and they have like the gold standard. I think it is. It's pretty inexpensive and is, it's really pretty good quality for like just Walmart. Um, but yeah, I think just like making sure there's enough protein in it, it's a higher quality, get an isolate. Um, if you whey is great, like I use whey. Um, if you're like vegan or vegetarian, then you want to get like more of like a pea protein powder, ah, um, okay. that usually has a, all of the, most of the, uh, essential amino acids you need. Um, you could do like rice protein powder, they're a little bit more expensive, but if you are like vegan or something, you could do that. Um, but yeah, I mean like they're great to use for sure. Uh, they're not necessary. There's a lot of hype on it. You don't need protein powder. I mean, obviously it's better to get your nutrients from whole foods, but I do use protein powder. I make protein pancakes with it too. Um, which is awesome. So definitely beneficial. It's not necessary though. And we got three more, uh, segments left, uh, not to take up all your time. Oh no, um, I got plenty of time. So segment number one uh and it can just be just five things it's, uh, it's called what's in your fridge so five things what's in your fridge go for it okay i definitely have eggs and egg whites i have some chicken <laughs> i have a bunch of seasonings so flavor gang is what i use like i also have like hot sauce flavor gang is awesome it's like 
pretty much just like seasonings and like water. Some of them are, they have extra stuff, but there's not like a lot of like artificial like crap in it and pretty low Where calorie. Where would be able to purchase this at? Um, just like online, like flavor game. Oh, okay. um, yeah, they have like different sauces and seasonings and then they have um, like cream of rice and they have like one tastes like, it's like brownie batter. Tastes like a brownie and it's a really great source of carbs. So I like that one a lot. Um, yeah, it's really good. And then I also have like a lot of fruit. I have raspberries, blueberries, I have oranges, bananas, but that's not my fridge actually. Um, we definitely have some cookies. I'm not going to lie in our drawer, <laughs> but those, we don't use them that we don't have them that much. So we have those in there. <laughs> um, and like spinach have that. Yeah. And yeah, second, second segment what's in your cabinet what are kind of like your go-to supplements besides whey protein oh. and creatine because multivitamins <laughs> yeah are another world world win when it comes to so many different uh vitamins and minerals being thrown out there for the average joe yeah so my cabinet i have a lot of peanut butters and nut butters like i love peanut butter so that's awesome. But supplements, I have uh, I have glutamine that I use. Um, I used to have like a, a gut health issue, so I just take that. It's helpful. It's a it's amino acid, so it just helps with like recovery, but also helps like with lining your gut. Oh, really? Uh, the okay. lining. Yeah. So that's really good. I'm um, just kind of keep it like healthy, basically. So I take that. Um, I have I have a pre workout. It actually has caffeine in it. Um, I thought it was a non stim, so that's kind of annoying. Um, but I do have that. I have, um, obviously lots of protein powder. I'm looking at what I have. I have, uh, what else do I have? I have, um, essential amino acids. So BCAs versus amino acids or essential amino acids. They're both amino acids, but essential amino acids are the ones that your body can't make. So I would get those uh, instead of just BCAs because you're getting all the ones you need. So I put that in my intro workout. I have like a scoop um, I have that. I have creatine, obviously. Um, and then I have like my general health supplements, like multivitamin, fish oil, um, some other stuff like that. But those are uh, most of my supplements. And fish oil is fish oil um, like is fish oil like really like a, like really really essential because I see a lot of different brands for fish oil as well. Yeah, I think most people aren't getting enough omegas in their diet. Like most people aren't. Um, so I have most, I take it. I have most of my clients supplement with it because they're just not getting enough. Um, it has a lot of benefits. Um, the thing about fish oil is you want to make sure that you're taking enough. A lot of the supplements, I mean, in general, the dosages are actually not enough to be effective. So you want to have like enough of the DHA and the EPA which is like on the back and generally you want about like 500, uh, milligrams per each. Um, and then you want it to be non oxidized. So that's like that the mean? best quality. Um, it's just like the breakdown of it. Um, your body is going to just absorb it better to be honest. Um, so I, I use the Morph Omega from Morphogen Nutrition um, because it's the, the omegas, the, the right quality, it's not oxidized. And then it also has vitamin D and vitamin K, um, in that one supplement. And most people aren't getting enough vitamin D and then you need vitamin K to help absorb vitamin D. So, um, that's the one I take. It's really high quality. And a lot of the fish oils that you get at the store, like Walmart, if you look at the back, there's like, you have to take like three or four servings to get the right dosage. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just making sure that, because it's not, a lot of supplements, they're not FDA approved. So uh, you don't really, they're not always quality. Um, so just making sure that you're getting the right, the the good quality ones. Okay. Um, I guess in last but not least, um, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges to, um, you know, just to the sport of bodybuilding, especially on the woman's side, because the men's side, obviously they get a lot of pub. But for the woman's side, you don't really hear as much, uh, you know, from, from the lady's perspective. Yeah. 
Um, I love bodybuilding, but, uh, I think what I've noticed is I think the women tend to struggle the most with like body image, because when you're on stage, you're very, very lean. You're at this like elite level of conditioning that's not maintainable. And then you have to gain some body fat back afterwards, just for general health. And I know a lot of us, we struggle with gaining that body fat back because there's a lot of pressure on women in general, being very lean and having a flat stomach and all this stuff. So I know like me and like my roommates and like just people I know that are in bodybuilding, they struggle a little bit with building that, gaining that body fat back afterwards, like their body image. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing I've noticed. Um, and I think, uh, probably the biggest thing, and I think it's just, it's harder for women because women natu- naturally have a higher body fat set point than men. And you're trying to get to a very low level of body fat and, you know, it's not always, it's not healthy to, to be that, that lean. It's not forever. So it's just temporary, but, um, I think it is harder for women. It's a lot more like stress on our bodies. Um, a lot of women will lose their menstrual cycle while they're prepping temporarily. Um, and if you have a good coach, they're helping you get it back afterwards, but that's, you know, it's a, it's a stress on the body. Um, men don't have to worry, worry about that, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I will say too, I mean, I don't have experience in this personally cause I'm not a pro yet. But I mean, I think it's unfair that the women don't get paid as much when they, for shows professionally, um, I think they should get paid more. I understand like the bodybuilders getting paid more because they're much bigger, they're much leaner. So it's harder work, but I think there's a really, really big gap in what the women get paid versus the men. So I just throw that out there too. I think that that should be, that, that gap should be shortened a little bit. Um, But yeah, I think the body image thing is the biggest thing. And then just like, I think it's harder for women like physiologically to get that lean. Thank you. uh, Thank you, Sarah, for, you know, for being straightforward and, and, you know, and, and to the point as I continue to learn a lot from, uh, from each guest, like each week, for example, as you're talking about, you know, like the pay and all that, I'm thinking of a young lady we had, she's a a professional stunt woman. And I'm just thinking, yeah, you know, I'm I'm learning from each and every one of you. And as I'm thinking like, you know, hopefully down the line, more female bodybuilders will probably take on like more movie roles, kind of put female bodybuilders at the forefront and kind of generate more endorsement deals Mm. to kind of get that money and get that pot a little bit bigger. So, you know, my gears are kind of turning as you're talking. (laughs) And actually one last piece, um, you know, I guess like majority of the viewers are student athletes for one sport or another. Um, would you be willing to take on uh, student athletes at the college level now? And what sports would you kind of say nay to? Oh yeah, I would love to take on athletes. I like that's my my niche. Like I want to work with athletes. Oh okay. Um, I mean primarily like people that want to build their physique up. But yes, I do work with athletes. And then also having worked with them, like as an athletic trainer, um, I wouldn't say there's any sports I wouldn't work with. Um, there might be ones I'm more familiar with. Like I'm more familiar with like soccer, football, track, than like maybe boxing or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'd work with them. And then uh, what was the other question? <laughs> and like, and you know, like pretty much actually pretty much want to know, like how would they be able to get in touch with you oh. to kind of get like your your rates and stuff like that? Oh yeah. Um, well, they can follow, anyone can follow me or contact me on Instagram. It's just okay. uh, Sarah with an H, a Serbo, A-C-E-R-B-O fit. So Sarah Serbo fit. Oh, okay. um, you can contact me on there. Um, and then, so I have a link if you want to apply for, uh, for coaching, you could do that or just message me and then Facebook. I don't really use Facebook as much. Um, just Sarah Serbo. So that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. But yeah, I mean, if anyone like listening to this wants to has any questions or like anything at all, like I'm happy to talk to you guys. Like I want to, I want to really help everyone. So, um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or anything at all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah, for taking time out of your schedule. Heavy Brand Podcast is forever grateful. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, thank you so much for having me on. It was it was awesome, and I'm I'm honored to be on. So thank you. Thank you, and have a blessed day and a blessed year. Period. <laughs> thank you too. See ya.